Battle Ashwood Asylum. I just sharpened my knives. Well, my parents' knives and my knife. I didn't sharpen my all, both my knives. I have a I have a paring knife that I didn't sharpen that I really should have as well. I'm getting noticeably better at it though. Like uh, I'm I'm having some practical improvements with my uh, with my knife sharpening skills. I didn't used to be able to push cut. You know, I wasn't able to push cut, and now I uh, I have sharpened my knife, which is a uh, I can't remember the name of it. It's a Japanese. The name is escaping me. The name is the name is totally escaping me. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't. I I feel I feel embarrassed. The name has escaped me. A Japanese chef knife. Uh, what was it called? What was it called? What was it called? Japanese traditional knives. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Santoku. It was a Santoku, and um, I like it. I use it for. Uh, well, it's, it's the only chef's knife I use in my uh, in my cooking. I do use a paring knife. I want to get a utility knife as well. Um, and then that's, well, I, I have a paring knife. Um, I want to get a utility knife. Um, and then I want to get, uh, like a pair of shears, some nice metal shears as well. And then, uh, that's pretty much all you need for, like, a pretty basic sort of knife set for, for cooking pretty much anything you'd want, right? Um... So anyway, I got a I got a Santoku, which is a nice knife. Cost me a couple hundred bucks. Um, very very nice knife, though I like it a lot. And it's now uh, finally I have managed to get it to the point where it is sharper than when I first bought it. So I'm uh, I'm pretty happy about that. Well, it was uh yeah. I've I've been able to sharpen it sharper. I've been able to sharpen knives sharper than I got this knife when I first bought it, since before I bought it. Um, but this is the first time I had like uh, a noticeable like yeah you need like the next level of sharpness you know um, to be able to do that, which is push cutting a piece of paper, um, which is really 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 nice. You know, I've always been able to sharpen it to like slide cutting paper. That's that's not really hard to sharpen a knife to that point. Um, if you go get a knife, any knife that you got in your house, and you uh, you grab a piece of paper and you just like hold the paper firm, and then uh, place the knife on it, and then just kind of slide it back and let the the weight of the knife kind of press down into the paper. It'll it'll slice the paper, and if it doesn't, um, your knife is is below acceptable levels I would say um, for for like a uh, sharp knife um, it'll maintain that sharpness that level of sharpness for quite a, uh, a while as just like a home cook um, it's not really that bad right and then getting it to that point is also not really hard like you get a, a, a half decent like you know double-sided whetstone or whatever and Probably first try you'll get it to the point where you're slide cutting paper. It's it's really not a feat, but it is fun. It is fun. It's just not a. It's nothing to be particularly proud of, in my opinion. As fun as it is, and as uh, as good as it feels, I mean, you can be proud of it, but it, it's nothing. I don't know. You you can be proud of whatever you want. Like you you, you know you, you accomplished something. You did what you set out to do. That's always worth you being proud of it. But. Uh, I don't know what the word is that I'm looking for. It's not. It's not something that is um, groundbreaking. It's not. It's not a. I guess it's not a particularly impressive feat to uh, anybody that has ever sharpened a knife. You know, to people who haven't sharpened knives, it is. It is quite an impressive feat. But if you've never sharpened a knife, then you don't know how easy it is to get it to that point. It is quite easy. Um, anyway, so. Uh, I got it to the, the push cutting point now, which is uh, rather than sliding the knife back and letting it go, you just kind of like push the knife through the paper and it just kind of cuts the paper. Requires 
it to be a lot sharper than uh, than slide cutting because you don't get to uh, you don't get to use the the like serration of the blade when you push cut right because when or when, when you're slide cutting you get the the, the little, little serrations on the edge of the blade the imperfections of the of the blade kind of tear the paper apart and that's why sliding is is such an easier way to cut it and that's why when you're cutting things you know it's it's like uh, you take like your serrated blade that you cut with like you cut bread with or whatever right take one of those you just like shrink down the serrations and that's basically what your average knife is in a kitchen right with just lots and lots of little imperfections and and splits and cracks and breaks and all that kind of stuff just little tiny tiny microscopic little bits right um, so when you're sliding, rather than pushing, it, 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 those little imperfections make it a lot easier as it, uh, as it kind of tears apart whatever you're cutting through. And since it's on such a small scale, it won't look like you're tearing paper, it'll still look like you're cutting paper. Um, because like, you are. That's, that's what cutting is. Um, push cutting doesn't get to rely on those, uh, imperfections. Because there is no sliding action. There's no, you know, you're not using those serrations. You're just using the sheer tip of the knife to, to like part the, the 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 like bits of paper apart. You know, it's a whole whole another level of sharpness required. And I got it there. It's my first time getting it to, to be a push cut in, uh, in a piece of paper. So I was I was really pleased with that. Good job, me. I'm happy with that. I can't. Uh, I can't really talk to my parents because I'm not really, you know, I'm out of CBD. <laughs> it didn't last long. I got five of them and five of them did not last long. But uh, I wanted to, I wanted to show it off, but like describing the intricacies of, of why push cutting is so much more impressive than slide cutting when you can't actually talk is definitely it's a bit of a challenge. So I didn't really get to, to show it off to anybody, but I was super pleased with myself. Got a nice push cut finally. Never had that before. I should go cut some grapes or something. I gotta get some new whetstones. I might buy some. Just, uh, I'd like to get um, a lower grit one. Because one of our knives has a, a few chips in it. A couple of our knives actually have a couple of chips in them. Um, from a, a few of our knives. Most of our knives. My parents don't take good care of their knives. Um, got lots of cracks and chips and bits missing and stuff, you know. And, uh... To, to kind of get rid of those, you have to, you know, remove the steel, right? <laughs> you have to actually, like, cut into it. And my parents' knives are typically, like, a hard stainless steel. Um, which is very hard and uh, takes a long time to, to sharpen by hand with a whetstone. I'll say that much for sure. Um... My knife is a uh, white paper two uh, core with um, I forget what kind of coating. Damascus steel, I believe. Yeah, Damascus steel. Yeah, Damascus steel coating with the white paper two core. So both of them are reasonably soft. The core is is reasonably soft. It's it's uh not it's noticeably easier to take the steel off of my knife versus uh they're like really tough hard stainless steels um you know just just as i'm like sharpening it i can like see more metal coming off in the on the wet stones you know um but uh you know the the the, the alternate the other side of that is that uh it also holds the edge kind of longer doesn't dull as quickly mind you it's it's still gonna dull that that microscopic you know push cut kind of level of sharpness still very very quickly so I didn't, I didn't get their knives to that point I got it to slide cutting a, a very comfortable slide cut also I'll, I'll, I'll say that but when once you start getting into like push cutting you have to you have to start pulling out like the cardboard <laughs> you know um, and I'll, I'll, I'll uh, I forget what it is dropping I, I got a piece of cardboard that I used to strop my knives um, I'll strop their knives it makes like a slight difference but when, when you get the strop out you know it really only makes a difference for like the first couple of cuts after you stropped you know 
before uh, those those tiny imperfections that this drop fixed um, kind of stop being a thing. Um, I have uh, I have just a piece of cardboard that I keep with my knife, so I just drop whenever I uh, cut something and then get to go. If uh, if I feel like I need it for for whatever I'm cutting, tomatoes or something like that, I might do that. Anything anything that I, I'd feel like I really want a nice sharp knife for this. You know, mo most of the time I'm cutting like green onions or regular onions or you know mushrooms, zucchini, asparagus. I'm like you know. It's uh, a sharp knife, I'm not going to complain about it, but like after a certain point, you're not really noticing much of a difference. Whereas for something like uh, grapes, tomatoes, anything that like that where it's a little bit more slippery, having that really, really sharp edge does make a difference. So I'll, I'll typically strop it for that. I want to get like a proper strop because uh, it's not even like security to anything. I just like put it down on the counter and strop. It does the job, you know? It'll go from being like a nice clean, like today when I did it, before I uh, stropped it, nice clean slide cut, couldn't push cut. Strop it on the cardboard, now I can push cut. Put it away, it's not going to maintain that sharpness as it kind of bounces around in the in the uh, sheath that I have for it. Saya. Um, just because like the stropping, it puts such a, you know, tiny microscopic difference right like it doesn't it doesn't it's not it's not making or breaking your knife right it's it's making such a small difference really um that even just bouncing around in a in a sigh for like a moment as you're putting it in and pulling it out that's gonna wear it down you know it does it doesn't last long this drop but you know it was nice to uh, to get it to a push cut stage it was really really nice i felt really good about that you are scary I felt really good about that, honestly. Oh, we gotta show off the stats in case anybody cares. Here's your stats. Um, yeah, I did that. I got it. My hands smell like steel. <laughs> Is the kind of downside of it. I washed them, but you know, yeah, the smell is definitely still there. It'll be there until I wash it a couple more times, really. Realistically, you know. Uh, I have a very sensitive sense of smell as well. But first batch of Zeds heading your way. Get ready to load. It's okay. It's okay. It'll go away. I don't sharpen all that off anyway. We don't uh, my parents don't my father cares about the knife being sharp. Um But even even he's kinda like, you know not that concerned about it really. Um, my mother especially would rather the knives be dull because she thinks they're safer. She's absolutely insane and I, she should not be trusted with a knife. Um, because dull knives are like so much more dangerous. Um, but, uh, you know, no, they don't really care about their knives being too sharp. Uh, and then, uh, they also don't cut themselves, you know? Not often, anyway. Um, so it's not, it's not like, uh, it's not like I'm like worried about them cutting themselves if I don't sharpen their knives, you know? And they also don't really care about their knives being too sharp, so I'm like, whatever, I'm not sharpening your knives too often. Um, and then my knife, I don't sharpen very often at all anyway, because like I said, I, I don't, I'm mostly vegetarian. Um, you know, primarily, I'm not, I can't, I can't in good conscience say that I am. A vegetarian because I, I literally had a pot roast last night and then leftovers today so like I eat meat but the only times I eat meat are um, when otherwise uh, you know when when it's the only food available to me or if I'm like eating with family or whatever you know like my family wants to make like a nice pot roast or whatever and they didn't do a very good job of it uh, but if they want to make a pot roast or roast beef or pork chops or whatever and have me uh, join them for dinner. I'm not going to be like, oh, but you have to make a vegetarian option, you know? I feel it's just a little bit... Well, I'll, 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 I'll say it this way. I think it's a little bit rude to expect people to, uh, you know, change their whole diet for the day just because you're coming over for dinner. I also think that it's pretty rude to invite somebody you know as a vegetarian over 
and then uh, not make vegetarian food. Um, I think I think it's both sides, you know. I think that. Uh, but anyway, so when when my family is having a dinner or whatever, I'll eat meat. Um, but other than that, I, I don't really eat meat unless it's not available. Like I have dumplings in my freezer that have pork in them. You know, I just I can't get vegetable dumplings. If I could, I would get those instead, but I can't get them. None of the stores I uh, I go to carry them, or if uh, if they do, they they don't, they're not like good, <laughs> uh, or they're expensive. And I'm like, you know, like I just I want to be a vegetarian. I'm not I'm not you know blowing my money on it, and I still want to eat food I like. So you know, I might get into making my own dumplings at some points. Um, but like if I want dumplings, I'm having I'm having dumplings, and if I can't get vegetarian dumplings, then I'm not having vegetarian dumplings. You know. I'm gonna have meat dumplings. That's just the way it goes. But uh Hello? Yeah, I'm uh Make for the pod and gear up. I'm 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 as vegetarian as I can be within reason. Um anyway, so the, the the moral of the story is I don't really cut much other than like vegetables and I don't really like the hard vegetables like uh you know, squash or something, you know? Potatoes. I don't really eat much potato. Um, you know, so I, I end up eating. You know, I have to cut up mushrooms or broccoli or zucchini or asparagus or you know peppers, onions. It's not. It's never. It's, it's rarely something that uh, necessitates a sharp knife. You know, rarely something where a sharp knife would even be noticeably like like the the the. Where it has to be like where, where like a super sharp no knife is even gonna be noticeably better than like a okay sharp knife, you know? So I don't I don't sharpen my knife very often just because it's I don't I don't even notice it getting dull until uh, quite a ways in, which is I think a good thing because it means that my knife's gonna last a little bit longer. Um, not that like a knife isn't gonna last a while, because you don't take off an awful lot of steel. Um, for uh sharpening you know you're, you're really making like m you know micrometers you know like it, you're not you're not making much of a change to the knife like uh, we got uh, some knives from my grandparents a while back uh, which is one of the knives that they use and those are the knives that are the most cracked because they never ever sharpened their knives ever um, and and they had them a long time so literally we got the knives and like I, I couldn't cut myself I tried in, in like absolute seriousness to cut myself. I tried to draw blood and I couldn't. <laughs> it, it was insanely dull. They were insanely dull. Just like you couldn't you couldn't use them to cut something. You might be able to use them to like assist you in tearing something apart with a fork <laughs> or something, you know. You could stab something with it. You you ain't cutting with it though you know um and now they're nice sharp knives you can slide cut with them and you know do whatever you need to do in a piece of paper or tomato or zucchini or a piece of pork or whatever you want right nice reasonably sharp knives but because they never really took care of them at all ever um they had some pretty big chips in them and uh at the start they were i want to say maybe like about a centimeter long, like along the width of the blade, and then maybe like four millimeters deep. Like they were really big chips, and now they're they're about a millimeter deep and a little bit less than a centimeter long. So I've uh, definitely worked it through, but that's been a number of sharpens, like sessions. You know, they're getting. Sharper, for, they are sharper. I can I can slide cut piece of paper with either of them. You can cut into tomatoes or whatever you need. However you want to do it. You're, you're, it's a nice sharp knife. You know, it'll do whatever you need to, to do, right? Um, but uh, but um, yeah, it's just uh, I want I want I want a lower a lower grit. <laughs> a stone just to make that process a little bit easier because I could just sit there with my uh, I think I have a s 
thousand grit, and then a six thousand grit. You know, I could just sit there with my thousand grit stone and just slowly wear it down and get rid of those chips. You know, I, I don't. Not. Nah, it would take a long time to to wear that much down. Cause they were deep. They were deep. You know, lo length not really the uh, the most important thing, really, because like. You're sharpening the whole width of the blade at once, right? You want to make sure that you're keeping it as even as you can, anyway. Um, and uh, you want to you want to make sure you're keeping it as as, uh, as 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 reasonably straight and well, not necessarily straight if it's not a knife that's supposed to be straight. My Santoku has a, a pretty intense curve at the end, where it kind of curves up to the tip. Uh, and then most chef knives also have a, a fairly gradual curve as well, like uh, German style chef knives. Um, anyway, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm using this. We're taking out a scrape with this, okay? Um, yeah, I need you to die though. Um, Yes, yeah, I want. I want. Uh, I want. I want a lower grit so that I can, you know, wear through it a little bit quicker. And then I want a. I want a higher grit because I have a uh, three thousand grit, I believe. I have one thousand, three thousand, I believe is what I have. Um, three thousand is is a good polish for sure. Don't get me wrong. You know that's that's respectable for sure. I don't have any problems with three thousand grit, but um, a. Uh, gotta do that sometimes for fun, right? What else are you going to do? Um, 3,000 grit is fine for nice polish. But if I were to get, like, you know, a nice, like, 6,000 grit or something for afterwards, just to get, like, a really nice polish, a nice, clean polish on it, mm, that'd be good. Or, like, some polishing uh, paste or something like that to stick on a piece of cardboard or something to, to get, like, a nice polish off on it as you... Uh, just to finish it up, you know, get that nice shine on it, especially because um, the knives that they have, I'm also thinning them out a little bit, and just a little bit. They're uh, they're quite thick, and the thickness of a blade is, uh, I mean, there 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 is an importance to it for sure to make sure that you have, uh, um, like it's strong you know so you can take uh, hits from the side or whatever or scrape it along a cutting board or something like that right it's important to make sure that you have that uh, um, width just to make sure that it's uh, a nice strong secure blade um, especially for people like my parents who aren't going to necessarily respect the blades with um, you know what the blades deserve um, so uh, oh don't turn around I don't like that um, but I want to I want to thin them out a little bit at least, you know, just just a little bit, right? Not much, but uh, definitely something. Are we gonna flawless this uh, matriarch? We just flawless the matriarch. Incredible performance. Flawless victory. Anyway, so I I want to thin them out a little bit because it may like having a nice thin knife. There, there's there's a, a uh, there's a a perfect width, right? My knife is definitely thinner <laughs> than the perfect width. It's it's pretty thin. Um, and then the knives that they have are, are too thick. You want you want somewhere in the middle for like a general purpose knife for people who aren't like literal children um, with their knives. You know, you don't want it so brittle that you have to be like super careful with it, which is kind of what I have to do. I sh I can't like smash garlic or something with the blade or whatever right like it's it's too thin for that um, but you don't want it so thick that when you try to cut through an onion you have to like rip the whole dang thing open as you you slice it through horizontally right you want to you want to you want to kind of right in the middle there right i mean i want it to be as thin as possible and i'll just respect the knife but for general purpose use for people who have like some semblance of idea about like hey maybe i shouldn't like lean on the blade while it's you know hanging off the edge and I have a heavy weight on it, you know, just to see how, how much it takes to snap it. Because it'll snap. You know, people who aren't like idiots. Um, 
a little bit thinner than uh, than what they typically give you with like a German Chef knife that you pick up at your local uh, cookware store. A little bit, a little bit thinner is is generally pretty good because they're selling them for people who are dumb, right? They're selling for people who, you know, the the lowest common denominator, right? Um, so as long as you're not the lowest common denominator, you want it a little bit thinner. A nice thin knife makes such a big difference to to slicing stuff. Honestly, it does. It makes like an enormous difference. Like I cut through like an onion, right? Like horizontally to get like uh, that slice in there, and then you can like dice it real real easy. You get like a thick knife, you're trying to go through there, you have to push that onion apart so much as you go through. That's a lot more weight, that's a lot more like friction and and like just force that you have to push into the knife. When you have a nice thin knife, you don't have to push it apart very much. The blade is doing most of it. It doesn't really have to expand beyond that so much, you know? So you just get to kind of slice right through very, very, very easily. Um, anyway, so I've been thinning it out a little bit. And, uh, yeah. That's going to do it for today, though. So thank you for watching. Remember to like the video, if you like, and subscribe to see more in the future. Comment if you have anything to say. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.